So my last video received a lot of comments about what setup I use, so now that I'm back from visiting family for Christmas, I wanted to make a proper video to address all of these questions. The tube is a Technosky SLD-130 OWL series. There's the OWL on the dew shield, <laughs> really cute. So that's a triplet with 130 millimeters of diameter and it has a native focal length of 900 millimeters. I do have a reducer slash corrector on it of 0.8 times, so that brings it down to 720 millimeters of focal length. And the cool thing about it that you can see from the bottom here is that this flattener is adjustable, so you can actually like twist it out and then it comes out longer, so you don't need to be able to have the, the exact adapters for your camera, but you can just adjust this to get the perfect focus, uh, back focus. And to control all of it, I have an ASI Air Pro, which controls the mount, the camera, the focuser, the guiding, everything. And it also powers both the mount and the camera. So the nice thing is that I just have one cable going up from the ground. And then it's super clean because everything else just goes between here and the other devices. The camera is a ZWO. ASI 6200mm Pro, so this is a full frame monochromatic or black and white camera. And in front of it, I have ZWO's own filter wheel, the 7x2 inch filter wheel. I have a set of Antlia filters mounted in it. I have luminance, red, green, blue, hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen, so kind of your standard stuff. For the Christmas tree cluster, I only did use hydrogen and oxygen mainly, and I believe uh, red, green, blue for like two pictures just to get the star colors right. Then I have ZWO's own uh, OAGL, so this is an off-axis guider. For those of you who don't know what that is, this is just a tiny little prism in there that steals out a fraction of the light coming from the telescope, directs it into this second camera, which is an ASI 120 mm mini which takes a picture like every second or so and if it finds that the stars have drifted ever so slightly compared to where they were before it sends a correction command to the mount so that with my main camera i can actually take my nice 10 minute long frames that i usually work with and then i do have zwo's own focuser on here this is the eaf not a lot to say here. If you want to work with the ASI Air, this is your only option. So that's what I use and it works just fine for autofocusing when I change filters or the temperature drops. Possibly most importantly, the tracking mount that I have is the Rainbow Astro RSD-135, which is one of the first harmonic mounts on the market that this tiny little thing that weighs about 4 kilos is able to support a scope up to 18 kilos and track the sky quite nicely. And then it does have its own counterweight shaft and counterweight, which is actually not needed with this scope because it's not that heavy. But I just have it to make sure that the whole thing doesn't kind of tip over if there's a little bit of wind. And then all of this is sitting on a Technosky hybrid tri-pier which I think is much nicer than just a regular tripod because if you do have a long scope like mine, then if it's pointing straight up, the risk is that you end up like touching the legs of the tripod and the whole thing just kind of falling over or making a mess. This is obviously a quite complex setup, so I would not recommend you buy this if you've never taken a picture of the stars before. But this is in no way to discourage anyone because all of this is definitely not needed to start taking nice pictures of the sky. If you have like a DSLR or mirrorless camera and you put that on a simple sky tracker that just counteracts the rotation of, of the earth, that's more than enough to start with and you'll be able to get very, very nice pictures. And if you live in a rural area not like me, you will get much nicer pictures than I do because the light pollution here is very bad.